the English Riviera, Torquay. For over a hundred years, one of Britain's favorite seaside holiday destinations, home to some of the country's finest hotels. And this one. Silence, Christian, Christian. Is he silencing it? Welcome to the Grosvenor. Mount your dolphin, get set. At the helm, manager Mark. I don't pay the AA anymore. I've awarded it three stars. Long-suffering deputy Christian. The Grosvenor is different to other hotels. And I'm not blowing my trumpet here, but I think it's because I'm there. And unflappable reservations manager, Alison. Stop it! I've done it already! Just put them in! Have you had the good news? You're leaving, possibly, is that it? Together, they have one summer to save this loss-making hotel. We have to win. Failure yeah. is not an option. Not, not an option. By satisfying the demands of the great British public. Who flock here for summer holiday fun. <laughs> bringing all their baggage with them. It's everything, not just a room, it's the hotel itself. <laughs> you know, when I go on holiday, would I stay in this hotel? <laughs> My answer to that is um, the directors and owners of Primark probably don't wear Primark clothes. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to someone who carries a Union Jack with them wherever they go all around the world and plants it wherever I go. This week at the hotel, manager Mark celebrates the great British holiday. One of the benefits of having a great British holiday is you get British food. Come straight back for this, please. You can eat it. It's normal food. And when the British weather arrives to ruin his barbecue... It's going to be great. <laughs> Mark makes the best of it, like any true Brit. Listen, you can't have a British barbecue unless your hot dog gets soggy. The summer season might be drawing to a close, but manager Mark has to keep his seaside hotel open for business all year round. I'll tell you why I'm phoning. We've recently this year just bought the Grosvenor Hotel and I'm offering, you know, genuinely very, very competitive prices just to let you come and have a look. What about slotting it in in between your other holidays then? Hello, is that Mrs. Swift? Ah, have I dialed the wrong number or...? You, you've never stayed in Torquay? No? Would you like to come to a hotel in Torquay? <laughs> I mean, I mean, genuinely, I haven't phoned you, you know what I mean? But sometimes these things are meant to be, aren't they? You know? <laughs> I see every day as an adventure and a challenge, you know? I don't know if I'd want it to be too simple. I think that might get a bit boring. Apart from a bowling green, the sea's there, do you know what I mean? I mean, if you're, if you're a javelin thrower, you could throw it from your bedroom window and get it in the beach. What will you do? Maybe get back to us later or tomorrow? Tomorrow, OK. What? If you threw the javelin, you'd hit the sea. Well, you would. <laughs> do you know, we shouldn't bother with these. I should just phone anybody. We don't need to phone people who have stayed before. She's... That's me, I yeah, take You've taken the wrong <laughs> bloody phone number down. You useless, you are. Well, you're going to all have to start doing this as well. It's not just me. You should be doing it. When, when the phone isn't ringing in, we got to ring out, haven't we, you know? It's business as usual for manager Mark, but the rest of the staff are savouring the peace and tranquillity. Peace and quiet. Soldier on. Soldier on. That's the way to do it. That's the true British spirit. 
<laughs> May one have six full English, one with no tomato, one with a well done egg, and one with a runny egg. Merci beaucoup. Good morning. Nice to see. That's what I should be doing. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I know it does. It, uh, it sets you up for the day. To stop your tea from spilling, you have to lift it up a little bit, then pour it in. Morning, morning. How are you? Okay. I think the Great British Seaside Holiday really is is due to make a comeback. You know, it, it went out of favour in the 70s. People discovered aeroplanes, taking them off to Spain, but that's been done now. The ice cream's all pretty much there. Well, right, is it the same ice cream as last week? So. You don't need to get on an aeroplane, you haven't got all the nonsense, you haven't got a foreign language, foreign currency. It's simple. And if the sun shines, there's nothing better. Elaine, can you um, radio through to Ryan at the pool and ask him how much ice cream's left? Okey doke. Ryan, are you there, Ryan? Alan said, can you check the stock of the ice creams? What we need if we need to order anything else? So the sun's going to shine. See, I told you it'd be good. It may be the tail end of summer, but Mark's determined to host one more sellout barbecue by the pool. We want a hundred, at least a hundred rolls of for burgers and hot dogs, a hundred of each, because I'm expecting well over a hundred people this week, yeah. unless it rains. That's lovely. How was your journey? Very it's good, thank you. thank you. Fantastic. If I just take you thank around to you. your rooms, it's not far to go at all. Checking in today are Peter and Judy with their good friends Trevor and Glenda. There we are. And anything that can make your stay more enjoyable, more comfortable, I just have two words to say. Just ask. Thank you. Very much. Thank and you. that's that we're room, and we're you are here. right here. Okay, guys. I think you're going to like this one. We're going to like this one, girls. Children's bed in. <laughs> I've got two children's beds oh, in. Lovely. Wow. Thank you. Welcome to the Grosvenor. We're on holiday. Are we excited? Staying in the family room are Peter and his wife Judy. I think I'm just going to leave stuff in the case, Peter, to be honest. With them, daughter Lottie and granddaughter Casey. We're not going to the fair at the moment. Yet. Because that's a night thing. We've got our own caravan site business in Derbyshire, so we don't actually normally go on holiday. <laughs> so this is a bit of a treat, really. <laughs> We'll sort something out in a bit. I'm going to leave all these in here. We chose Torquay because our friends were coming to Torquay. I've never been. And Lottie, my little girl, actually thinks there's only a seaside abroad. Abroad? She's in England she hasn't didn't got know a seaside. that there was a seaside in England, which is quite scary, really. Mm. The other Can you train, just put that over there for me, please? <laughs> Peter and I have been together 29 years. When we first met, I was 17. Mm. Peter was 46. Six. So there's a 29-year age difference, mm. and we've been together 29 years. It's all in here. Is it's it? not in there. <laughs> it's all in the front there. We work together as a team, and we're soulmates, and 29 years later, and we're still in love, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> in the room next door are Glenda and Trevor. They invited Peter and Judy to come on holiday with them. Glenda and Peter were married for over 20 years. This is the first time they've all been on holiday together. The couple who are with us are Glenda and Trevor, and Glenda is Peter's ex-wife. You know, we get on really well. Oh, this is nice. Mm. They love each other, we love each other, there's no nothing in between, mm -hmm. and we've just got grandkids and children that are in the middle who are all for a happy life, really, and that, as long as the kids are OK. Mm -hmm. That's the main you know, when everybody's number happy. one importance. Really good prices, really good food on the barbecue. We do happy hour drinks all afternoon. Ooh, and we do wow. dolphin racing. Oh. And you can bet on it and win money. Oh, like a tote oh I see, like the races. Yes, and the Love children the are riding the dolphins in the swimming pool. Oh, they are the jockeys. That. Yeah, oh. Lottie you know? and Casey will yeah. love that. So will they be the jockeys then? Yeah. Perfect. They'll be in, they're playing yeah. pool now. Don't run. Don't hurt yourselves. It's all that to go next door. Yes. Look at me. Oh. Tomorrow, Tomorrow is better. reservation manager Alison's 40th birthday, and fellow Take That fan Christian has brought her an early gift. It's not on my wall, so I thought you might like it. 
Shut up! God, Christian! Thanks! Mwah! Because in my lounge, I've got all... Also oh proud of celebs, yeah. pop stars, yeah, yeah. Cheryl Cole and all that. But I don't wow. Oh my god, I'm loving it. Ice cream, rum and raisin, two tubs of each, please. Have you all noticed the sky? Perfect for a barbecue and pool party. Two strawberries and cream, two sticky toffee. Two honeycomb. We'll keep our fingers crossed for the weather. I haven't bothered to look at the forecast because I always get it wrong anyway. This is part 105.5. If you're heading out and about, wrap up warm and take your brolly. Two double chocolate chunk, two vanilla, two mint choc chip. The captain's saying it's better than being abroad. But when we've got the weather, yeah. you just we've feel got that, it. Yeah. You know, when, when, when the weather's here, that's it. You yeah. know, you, you don't need to go abroad when we've got the weather. <sighs> Washing's gonna be <laughs> soaked. It's liquid sunshine. Listen, you can't have a British barbecue unless your hot dog gets soggy. It's all gonna clear up in a minute, don't worry, don't panic. It'll all be great. It is actually, I tell you what, it's, it's getting lighter. <laughs> It's going to be great. <laughs> the one we had last week when there was 100 people and brilliant sunshine was a bit odd anyway. It didn't feel quite right to me. <laughs> Don't panic, nothing's cancelled. We're not beating that easy. Yeah, we... Definitely not. Harry, do you want to assist with the erection of the gazebo? Shall I warm my hands up? <laughs> I've got mascara on one eye, not on the other. I think we should move the sunbed. Good afternoon, Grosvenor Hotel. How can I help? Yeah, listen, Christian, I might get you to come down here and host this thing. OK, well, you'll have to you teach me quick, then. Down. Well, just come and host it. Won't be a problem. OK. Eight, nine, ten. Where's Alan or somebody? Maintenance. Good afternoon, Grosvenor Hotel. Listen, I urgently need some maintenance by the pool. Who, who have we got in today? Hold on, I've got Alan right in front of me. Right, can you send him straight down to the pool, thank you? Will do. Mark needs urgent maintenance by the pool. Help! Mark is determined that the dolphin races at this afternoon's barbecue will go ahead as planned, whatever the weather. All he has to do now is find and print the betting forms. Is the printer working here? I desperately need the printer. Can I borrow a black cartridge off somebody, please? Sorry, you can have it back. It's just we haven't got the things to print out for the dolphin racing, because we're going to have to do at least one race. We can't do nothing, you know? I don't know what it would be under. What's she looking for? I don't know. I don't know what it's called. All right, keep your It's on. a form I did for the tote payments. And when What's was the, the date? Okay. Last last week, Listen, wasn't go it? go down. What's the date today? It was well, like the 9th, the 8th or go the 9th. Up. You need more. Yeah, so it's all in here. No, I know, but it's not because... Wednesday, barbecue, dolphin tote ticket sales. If that's it, I'm going to smash you on the head. Shut up. Guess what I've just given Alison? What? Framed, autograph, take that. No way. Progression picture. Where did you get that from then? I've had it for youngs. See what Christian gave me. Look, look, look. Look! <coughs> Turn the door open. Who is that? What do you mean, who's that? People aren't going to come and sit around the pool today, are they? What can you do? Nothing. It's coming in thick and fast now, isn't it? Mm. They said summer's over, and I think they're right. Don't say that. Oh, well, at least we've got barbecue for lunch. Oh, <laughs> yeah! It's just like any other barbecue you've ever had, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think what makes us British unique is our sense of humour. Nothing is cancelled. We won't be beaten. <laughs> we can smile in the face of adversity, you know? So, if we go on holiday and it's pouring down with rain, We'll probably be laughing. What we normally do is little 50p tote betting on the dolphins, which we're still going to have at least one go of that. I'm wondering if we should sort of bet how long and if they manage to put the gazebo up. What do you reckon? So is this the Krypton factor or it's a knockout? I, I might put this on the itinerary for next week. <laughs> if wet, gazebo building contest. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> Two 
hours later and the rain has cleared. Deputy Manager Christian is on his way to host the Grosvenor's version of British holiday fun, inflatable dolphin racing. Are we starting? Does, is this guy doing it? Come on, get the dolphins out. We're, poised, We're going to in a minute. We're poised and ready. Can someone talk me through this? Because I don't know. Cool dolphins are going to start at this end. Yeah. And they're going to be pulled to that end. OK. Yeah. So what Where do we they... need? We need four jockeys. Four jockeys. Yeah. And four pullers. OK. OK. Try not to make a joke about the pullers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, thank you for braving the good old talky summer for our outdoor pool party and barbecue. We've trust you've all eaten and have enjoyed the food. Now comes the fun part. We are going to have dolphin racing. Little people, I need four jockeys. Don't be shy. That's number two, that's number three. Number four is here. There will always be a market for seaside resorts. <laughs> <laughs> that is what Britain is built on. Not your tanky chiefs, the lobster dance, when you're blood red because you're sunburned and having too much alcohol on the boat. Jockeys, are you ready? Pullers, are you ready? Three, two, one, pull! And there we go, number one is in the lead. So, all these wonderful party games and that. Number three is going into the lead. Maybe it is nothing special and nothing new. But it's what they've grown up with. Follow closely by number two. They remind them of their youth, their childhood. Here we go, and the winner is number three. And it's what brings them back. We need a prize for the winning jockey. You have won a pint of ice cream. <laughs> You're talking to someone who carries a Union Jack with them wherever they go all around the world and plants it wherever you I do. go. <laughs> we founded this, this entire empire on putting flags down. Seriously, <laughs> I have a Union Jack and wherever I've travelled in the world, I take it with me and if I go on a beach or whatever, I make a little tiny sandcastle and I plonk my Union Jack in it. You can see him opening up his briefcase and he's got the shovel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Little bucket and spade. <laughs> <laughs> Totted, knotted handkerchief. That one. Yeah, yeah. You said, now I'm British. I'm proud of it. Yeah, exactly. Now, what are you going to have to eat, then, girls? I thought you said it. They did a children's you did. menu. You did. And as you're white as well, just there any screw tops. So OK, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you Thank you. No oh, is that my name? Hi, Sean. That was Trevor's. Brenda's got one. It's Trevor's, then, cos I've got one. Brenda's got one. Yeah. Well, I want one. We've all got one now. Stop interfering. It's all under control. Peter and Glenda split up, friendly split up, divorced, didn't want to be together anymore. And then I came along. And it was a bit scary at first when I was young, you know, a bit different, different to handle and... Um, Hard to get to grips with. Yeah. It, didn't you? Yeah. That's not too bad, I can drink that. But now, we've been good friends for a number of years now. Mm. And we go for a drink together. We, we go for a drink together. They look after Lottie. Lottie, uh, Glenda will look after Lottie for me because we've still got the grandchildren. Don't knock your drink over, Casey. Casey, very close to your drink. Thank you. in the middle of the table. They knock over so easily, these do. They really do. So when they said they would like to come on holiday to Torquay, Glenda said, Would you bring Casey down and Lottie with us? I said, Yeah, that's fine, yeah. So that's how it's all happened. Mmm. What's the wine though? Passable. Not brill. Red and wet. A bit on the sour side. When we do go on holiday, we normally go abroad. To be honest, our standards are quite high, because when you go abroad, we always go for really good standard hotels and stuff. And sometimes the English hotels don't always live up to that. For customers seeking a more upmarket experience, the Grosvenor offers a second restaurant. The Inn. Hoping to attract more customers, manager Mark claims it's the very best steak and fish restaurant in Torquay. What have you got up here then? The rump steak and the, and the, and the sea bass. Is sea bass on? Yes, rump steak done, yes? So we just need to get that served and out of the way. These have been waiting quite a while, I know that. Can Tommy help or can I help? What do we need to do? 
because I feel we're behind. But tonight, when the restaurant is not even half full, manager Mark is turning diners away. The kitchen can't cope with the orders. The fear is that if you overload the kitchen and then you're, you're sat waiting for 40 minutes, yeah. you'll complain. D does that make sense? Because it was just a big lump in one go. Thank you. If you come back, Mel will remember you and we'll let you have a complimentary drink. I'm just trying to bribe you to make sure you do come back and we don't lose you. Well, I'm not very happy because I, I can't get used to turning people away. I'm not very comfortable with it, you know? You know, it's like, it's like a... No, because to me, you see, that's an admission of failure. You know? You turn someone away, you failed, you know? Listen, I want to go and see if there's anybody left in the... I'll see if they're about to all march out the restaurant because they haven't been bloody served yet. I feel like I'm going somewhere else. Yeah. Oh, no, it's time to go. Yeah, but we've been here. We're good, good at one, haven't we? It's time now. Yeah. What's this? Right, come on, table away. Which table is this? Do you know? Hang on, we want peas. Have we got the lemon here? Put with the fish. Could you say to the chef, if our meals don't come in the next five minutes... We're off. We're off. We've been here an hour now. Because it's an hour, is it? It's not good customer service. Tell them the sauce is just coming. All oh, right, OK. Are they both the same, these steaks? I think Mark... It's his business, but he's very difficult to work for because he likes things his way, whereas that doesn't mean everybody else likes it his way. So, say, for instance, the presentation of something on a plate. No, put it there, facing in. Be careful. That's fine, OK? Mark has got a very old-fashioned view on food, so, like, we've got a melon starter, and then we've got scampi, and then we've got black forest gatto. I think that says it all. OK, what are they having? A batter it's called, but just one, they want to share it. And I Fine. Can't... And, you know... Right, let's get a decent one out. Don't let that fall apart. I want that to come out perfect. Do you want me to do it? One of the benefits of having a great British holiday is you get British food. You can eat it. You know what it is. It's normal food. And, and that's what I do in the hotel. I serve normal food. There's bone in this fish. This is rubbish. Is it all like this? Is this, is this all we've got? Oh, for <laughs> sake. We don't serve what I call sort of airy fairy art food, where you have a tiny sample in the middle of a big plate that looks very pretty, but then when you've sort of tasted it, you say, thank you very much, that was the sample, where's my dinner? Thank you. Come straight back for this, please. So, you know, we serve real food, the same sort of food you'd have at home. Just give me a one second. Sorry. Can you take this, please? Any chips to go? No, no, no. Shoot me with the chips. She didn't ask for chips, did she? It was for butter and cold. What did she say? Butter and cold. Fish and chips, I mean, with chips, that's what I asked you. Ah, so she wants the chips. It's all a bloody nightmare still, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know which lights work and which don't. What's that one? Oh, that's that one. OK. Whee! OK, girls, do you want to do DS case? I got it. Yes, please. Only for five minutes, girls. What? I don't think I want that big meal tomorrow now. I'd rather go out and have some chips, wouldn't you? <sighs> Good morning. It's breakfast time. Hello again. Hello, hello, hello. I know. Oh, it's, no, it's my twin. How is everything? Yeah, all right. Have we got any arrivals today? Yeah, we've got the fishies in already. The who? The fish. The fish? Yeah, they become fishies. <laughs> Why am I laughing? Why has all this been chucked? Because it was all buggered. It was this in there overnight. No, this is fine. This is fine. You're having a laugh? No, we're not having a laugh. When it's warmed up, it's absolutely fine. Wait a minute. I've got a mouth like Gandhi's flip-flop. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. I think you're all meeting in the bar, aren't you? The bar is open. Feel free. Thank you. It's not free, but feel free. <laughs> <laughs> Today is reservation manager Alison's 40th birthday. 
and Mark has gone out of his way to make her day extra special. Could you pull it towards you, please, a little bit? That's it. Perfect. What is the person's name? She's called Alison. And she's very old today. She's 40. Do I look older today? Yes. Ancient, love, ancient. Do I? It's all downhill now. <laughs> oh, my oh, God! So <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Look at my desk! <laughs> I'm loving it! I swear to God, I've worked for some people. Mark is the... He's probably the best boss I've ever worked for. And my dad, God bless him, said he was a wonderful boss, and he is. Happy birthday, dear Hola. It's like speaking foreign to me. I've enough trouble understanding bloody English. Come estás? Oh, God. <laughs> Bonjour, monsieur. You sound so Irish doing that. That's the one. Bonjour, monsieur. What's it to say? If you go abroad and you can't speak the language, what I do is I just speak slower and louder <laughs> until eventually they understand. <laughs> do you understand? And you just speak louder and slower, and then they do in the end. Is that why they think English is so rude and ignorant? <laughs> well, it's the language of the world, you know? Well, it is. That's the good thing that came out of the empire. At least when we go abroad, the majority of the world speaks our language, you know? I mean, it's not like we have any foreigners come down here, so we don't have to speak any languages. <laughs> How many people come here that can't speak English? Nobody. Well, apart from the bloody staff. <laughs> <laughs> For Peter and Judy, it's time to return to work, running their caravan site in Derbyshire. Right, Trev, see you. See you. Take care. Have a Bye -bye. good trip. I do find the Grosvenor a little bit tired. Could be lovely. I just wish they could keep the standards up like they do abroad. I personally am very critical because I know what it's all about. Um, and I know how hard it is, though. What are you doing? It seems we've got eight million staff just sort of doing stuff and... You've got to be happy, no matter what you feel like, you've always got to have that smiley face on. And just smiling and being happy drains you. How long before we sell them? No, 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 they've bought from St. they had 24 hours. Can we look at them, see what they look like? Really? Can we not freeze it like that? What are they only going to sell tonight? I've got about 10 cod in there. Where? I've just shown you it. Unbelievable. Why did we go and get these, then? Why did you go and get these? What's the point? I'm 51 now. I dreamed that I would be incredibly successful and wealthy and taking it easy and semi-retired. You do it once and then everybody here just forgets everything and never does it again. So I'm just wound up when I've just walked in here and seen two punnets of strawberries all been thrown away. The reality is retirement is a million miles away. The country slices being eaten by the staff. There's one left on the side and the whole rest of the packet's gone. So we haven't sold them to anybody, we've just eaten them. Times are hard, finances are really tight. It's a constant bloody battle. Every, every minute of every day is a fight. There's something to fight and win. Where are all the menus, do you know? I haven't got a clue, Mark. There's one. Yeah, but there's, there's enough for every table. If they've all been thrown away, I'm going to go nuts. What I'm saying is, if I catch anybody throwing a menu away, I'm going to sack them, and I don't care if they sue me. No, I'm, I mean it, because it's like a conspiracy. We're meant to be taking a load of money on the food and a load yeah. of money on the cocktails, and, and I will. I don't care. I've, I've got I'm in enough trouble with bloody ACAS. I don't give a shit anymore, to be quite honest. <laughs> Looks nice, doesn't it? Rose and Alan from Pontypridd honeymooned in Torquay 35 years ago. Straight ahead. Okay. Oh, yes. They're returning for the first time with their granddaughter Sophie to relive some old memories. Go find that, no. Hi. We met on Boxing Day 1974. I had been drinking in the bar. I went into the lounge and Rose was there in her pink hot pants. 
And in those days, the hot pants were in, and I took one look at her, and I went over to her and I said, you come to a party tonight with me to her friends. Oh, look at this. Oh, full poster. <laughs> we got a full poster bed, so. And it blossomed from there. But at first, she, she won't very thing. It's a mother that said, he's the one for you. Yeah, my mother, actually, I said, oh, I'm not really sure because he'd proposed. She said, you should say yes. Yeah. And I still was unsure. And you did, you asked your mother yeah. for advice then. This is like a honeymoon room, do you know what I mean? Oh, I'll tell her what I feel like. A cup of tea. Nice cup of tea. All right. It was very strange, actually, when you get married. For a start, it's very complicated when you both sleep the same side of the bed. <laughs> Which side do you sleep in, Al? Oi, you that side. Well, you've got granddad this side, so if you sleep over there. I can remember in the night, it was a disaster, our wedding night, because I was sick all night. After our meal, we got to the hotel late, and after... I don't know whether it was nerves, but literally, I was sick all night. Right, let's go and have a look. And the bathroom wasn't in your room then, you had to go down the corridor. First of all, you've got to look where the fire exit is. Right. Whenever you book into a hotel, always look where you can escape. Yeah? Outside swimming pool and garden. So what's this, like a little bar? This is the bar, yeah, yeah. Oh, lifeguard on duty, Rose. What's that? There's a lifeguard on duty as well. No. There is. Really? It is an all. Do you fit so? Yeah. Oh, look at the gardens. I think I'm really pleased with this. Yeah. Nice no sweets today, then, darling. It's Christian's day off work. But he's come in to share some highlights of his love life with Alison. Hey, what's the matter? Why did you look like to the side of the seat? I'm not. Just... What did you not? Where did you go out last night or something, did you? I've just not been stuffed for two days because I sort of met someone. Oh, really? I know not for that reason. Oh, what? Hotel spill, spill, spill. I met him on Friday. Is that it? You only met him on Friday. I love it. I spent Friday night together, Monday, Sunday night, Monday night. It's supposed to be coming around tonight. But for whatever reason, he shouts, screams, howls, whatever, in the middle of his sleep. And yeah. I can't sleep. Yeah, but it's called something, that, isn't it, when people sort of... Annoying bastard. <sighs> Just <laughs> gag him and say, Sure up, love. I told him I'm going to have earplugs for me and a gag for him. You know, it might add to it, Chris. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I feel sorry for the lifeguard. Mm. He was hoping that people would be around the pool today. Mm. Oh, the more I think about it, I don't know if I'd bother to employ a lifeguard in the hotel. Because the thing is, by saying there's a lifeguard, you're taking on the responsibility then, and now of. Anything happens. Whereas, if there wasn't a lifeguard there, the parents would be with them. Yeah. Well, I don't need your lifeguard there, do they? Yeah. He's closing up now. Yeah. After a hard day's work, manager Mark likes nothing better than to mingle with his guests. This hotel has caused a lot of problems. In the last seven months, I've lost my home, my marriage and my car because of buying this hotel. Jesus. The worst thing is, because my car was a beautiful red Bentley GT Continental. I must admit, I know this sounds terrible, but I could put up with losing my home. Just about put up with losing my wife. But I'm really upset I lost my Bentley. <laughs> you want the curtains open? Yeah. This is the most comfiest bed I've ever slept in. It is a lovely bed. Do they give you biscuits? There's biscuits today. You want a biscuit? No. I just wondered if they give you any. Thank you, love. Should I start the rows here or what? What's the time? Five to eight. I don't want a biscuit, then. I thought you said you want a biscuit. Oh, I just wondered if they give you biscuits. Oh, sorry. I am a little bit spoiled. I mean, our friends and family will say the same thing. Alan does spoil me. Put this in the, in the bottom of the wardrobe, is it? 
Sure. Uh, and he's quite old-fashioned in a, in a funny sort of way, you know, he would carry the suitcases and he does all the things that men's supposed to do. I think it's half a steak breakfast. Quarter past it. I'll go and check, look, right? Uh, yeah, and he's very good in the house. He puts a hoover through. Do you know? <laughs> Come on then, Christian, who's sending you flowers, love? Come on! I'll go red. Oh. <laughs> Oh, my God! How sweet is that? <laughs> Kill him. Well, let's put a smile on your face. Your customer services today will be second to none. Could have put roses in them. Don't be ungrateful <laughs> now. I mean, I've actually been single now for just over four years. I'm not saying I've been a monk. <laughs> I'm going to kill him. I've had my moments. Very few and far between, but it does make you feel human. Um, and sometimes it's just the medicine you need. Um, something a bit more permanent, just with one person would be nice. I've got sure. a stupid grin on my face now. Good. That's what you need, Christian. Hi, Mark. Hiya. Gentlemen, to Hello, see Rob. you. How do you do? Oh, hi. Nice to meet you. Today, oh, there is a very welcome visitor at the hotel. He's driven all the way from Crewe with a special delivery for Mark. It's about five minutes away, apparently, all being well. Yeah, no, wonderful. Yeah, no, no. It's somewhere it's... in the outskirts of the town. It's not that far. It's literally two or three minutes away. I didn't know. I knew, I knew Mark was getting one. I can't believe it's raining. Has it got all rain spots on it? <laughs> there it is, going into the lorry. <laughs> oh, no, don't spoil it. I'll see it in real life. That was the Bentley. <laughs> I want it to be a surprise. Yeah. Just wish I could afford one. <clears throat> Why are we waiting so long? <laughs> I think he's probably sold it on route. Yeah, that would be. That's him. Let me see if we can try and get him into here. Leave me in here. Seven months ago, Mark was forced to sell his prized British-made Bentley to help the hotel stay afloat. It's my car. It's <laughs> back. <laughs> Mark's hotel still has a long way to go. Same wheels? No, better. No, wheels. better, yeah. Wheels. Oh, they are good. Yeah, no, nice wheels. But despite the worries, Mark has splashed out on another Bentley. Same colour, same model, and same personalised number plate. Oh, let's just take it right the way to the top. I'll open the door, I'll put it inside. <laughs> That's the right way. <laughs> Today, manager Mark is the proud owner of a second Bentley, but this time bought on higher purchase. See, it looks like my car. It's just my car. Well, it is your car. Uh, that's all right. It's all right. Ashtray, cigarette lighter, it's all you need, you know? Today, I got my car back, and I'm really happy. I had mixed feelings whether I should do it or not. See, it's great having a car you've already had, because you know where everything is. I was worried about getting it back, because I was worried that people would think, where, where does the money come from? How can he afford, with all these problems, how can he afford this car? But to me, I can't afford not to have it. See? It looks like a speedboat. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if it floats. Does Mark know how ridiculous he looks? It's raining, he's got a soft top down. He looks like a complete chav. At the moment, I'm living in the hotel, I'm not having any wages, I don't spend any money. It's a couple of hundred pound a week, it gives me that car, it gives me that pleasure. You've missed this, haven't you? Just a bit. It's the first time I've seen you happy, Dad, in a long, long time. Yeah, no, but it's... It's good, I'm glad. Yeah, but it's yeah. a reason, you know? It's, it's I just... get it, it's your reason to get up and... Yeah. No, it is. I can't believe I can't get my phone to work. It's so annoying. <laughs> You're never happy, are you? Well, no, cos <laughs> I thought we'd go and see Nanny. Oh, she'll like this. You know? Well, like, that's why I wanted my phone to work, cos <laughs> then I could have phoned her and told her we were coming. Fair enough. You know? I know it'll be all right, cos I know what's in the bank, and I know roughly what the bills are owing. So that gives me a picture. I don't need to see figures, you know? So, you know, if you know what's in the bank and you know roughly how much you owe out to people, you know roughly where you are. There you go. When did you get this, then? About an hour ago. Are you a good businessman, then? No, I just, I just do the basics, you know? You, you have to take in more money than you pay out. Result, happiness. Well, I'll pick you up from the front now. I don't this know is just for the great. day, is it? No, this is forever. <laughs> I'll make sure I bloody keep it this time. 
Now that is a view. I can see the two rocks then. So it's not too blowy for you, is it? I look like Marge Simpson time we get round the block. <laughs> 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 what oh Marge? Welcome home, Carl. <laughs> Welcome home. It's all about winning. And winning in a nice way. <laughs> Harry and I went out to pick up women and came back with her. <laughs> 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 you know, the winning is not about me having the best hotel. It will never be the best hotel. Listen, I don't think we should leave this on reception because we've got too many unhappy people coming in at the moment. Yeah. I think it's very dangerous. <laughs> when I go on holiday, I expect everything to be at that very top notch. Right, we're on. I always book one that includes a butler. Having said that, the top end is boring. I think, although I may go to a top-end resort, if I went on holiday to the Groves now, I'd have more fun. Have you got everybody? That's what a holiday's for. It's about trying to put a smile on people's face. Have a great journey home. See you again. And there's just one thing to say as we go. 5 blind 50 Bye -bye. Bye -bye. <laughs> so, you only sing for the bingo when you can win money, then? Blimey. Listen, have a great journey home. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks. Bye-bye. OK, bye-bye. Right, drive right, safely. See you soon. I'd quite happily do it for nothing, you know? I, I wouldn't charge it. If I, could, if I didn't have to pay all the money out in all the bills, I wouldn't bother about charging the guests. <laughs> they didn't sing. <laughs> Don't start until every table's got a bingo ticket. Even if there's two or three people who say, look, just a pound between the three of you, you know? And you will find they will all play, honestly. It is important, it's the build-up for party night. Honestly, if you don't do bingo and then you just come straight when the party night, you haven't had the build-up. If we can hold on to them... We need them in here for 8 o'clock. I know we do. Oh, that's, fine. It's... that's fine, that's more of a challenge. Good. I've had enough of challenges. No, it's all oh, the challenge. That's what's meant to happen. It's boring otherwise. Well, this is true. If I owned this, it'd be totally different. It'd be like an A Club 1830 party venue. But the type of clientele we get here, that's not going to work. So what are we playing for tonight? On the red and the yellow tickets, we'll be playing for... Now, wait for this. You can't contain yourselves, can you? We're playing for five pounds for the line. Ooh. But at the end of the day, if you're going to do a job and you're going to put half your heart into it, why do it? So I put all my heart into it. Two and six. Ah! <laughs> I'm very passionate about the Grosvenor. You know, whether I love it or hate it, it's what I do. It's unsociable hours. I'd love someone in my life. I really would. But this industry makes it very difficult. It makes it very hard to build a relationship. What kind of person would you be looking for? Someone with a pulse. <laughs> I don't know. Someone with a sense of humour. It's important to laugh. Hey, a millionaire would be good, but that's not going to happen. A regular person with no hang-ups. Probably going to have a bit of baggage, but who hasn't? And someone will just accept me for me. That's all. Not a lot to ask for. Lots of love for making our holiday brilliant. Food, room, service, service from staff, excellent. All our group felt like one big happy family. They should be up, you know? Oh, oh God, she's going to go nuts. Listen, I've got a phone now, listen. Can you put these cards up for me, please? No, I'm busy. Well, just, it won't take a minute. You can oh, reach no, from in I there. Can't just... reach. Oh, of course you can. You're taller God's than me. For sake. Yeah, look, just, can you see what I've done? Oh. No, over a bit. <laughs> no, over a bit. No, there's a gap. That's it. That's it. Perfect. OK. Oh, Alison, I'll text you in a minute. Wait. Oh, no, no, you should have... Oh. <laughs> See? <laughs> it's because you're rubbish at it. I don't treat it as a job. It's, it's a life. I get up in the morning and this is what I do, you know? It's, it's, not, it's not a job. That isn't going to work. If it was a job, I'd sign in and out and go home and have a life. But, but it, it is my life. Just a bit of a concern. I've got a bit of a puddle in the gents' toilet there. I don't know if it's a leak or oh. if it's just that it's overflowed. Which one? What, the the just, one here? All right, there, yeah. I'll go and have a look. Uh, no, just in case. Yeah, no, thank you. If we are going to be flooded, I'd rather know sooner than later. 
I'm an all or nothing, you know? I either win or I lose, and there is no in-between. It's probably classed as nearly perfect. So what I'll do so is... So you're going to overcook it? So I'll overcook it. Yeah, good idea. That's what I normally do. <laughs> if I was cooking that in the restaurant, I would definitely serve it now. It's just right, you know? <laughs> <laughs> With my dad, the moment he gets comfortable, he stands up, basically, and he does something else, and he doubles his workload, you know? He won't sit down and he won't relax and he won't get into a routine that bores him, I suppose. My failing is I'm not able to teach people to think the same way that I think. If I end up with a hotel, shoot me. I'm it doesn't sure. look like it's worth I'm, it. I'm sure I said that once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I did. I wish I knew what made him tick and what drives him, and I think he did say to me once, it was, you know, I feel like I've got something to prove. And I asked who to, and he, he said, I don't know. So I said, it never stops. Well, just because it never stops doesn't mean you never have to stop. You know, whatever it is he's, he's got to prove, I think he has sort of proved it. Do you know what I mean? Next time at the hotel... We're all doomed, but Merry Christmas anyway. It's a change of season. Do it tight, cos I don't want my cushion falling down. And the biggest event in the hotel calendar. I'd love stuff like Twister. <laughs> You'd be good, wouldn't you, guests getting all... I don't think the guests want to play Twister. Quick, hurry up! Unbelievable, they've locked me out. This is so crazy, this. <laughs> we don't need to put on a pantomime, we're bloody having one. Merry Christmas to everyone! God, I have to say that one more time, shoot me.